started wood turning uh, as a result of, um, of a furniture, interest in furniture. Uh, that was my first turning experience uh, was associated with furniture parts. Um, I had intended to be a furniture maker. Uh, and, but, but when I borrowed a friend's lathe, after borrowing a friend's lathe for oh, a year or so, I tried to make furniture, but at the same time I was, I was um, uh, playing on this lathe that I had borrowed and fell in love with it. And I realized that the way I thought, the way my mind worked, was much better suited to wood turning than it was to fitting things together. Um, I tend to be a uh, very right-brained kind of person in terms of not liking to fit things together um, and, uh, not, and not being a real linear thinker. Uh, so wood turning was perfect for me. I enjoyed the kinetic uh, part of it. I enjoyed the, the, the immediacy of it. Um, and as we started, my wife and I started having children and she started not to spend as much time in the wood studio because of our, our children, I became more and more involved in wood turning and started selling off the furniture making equipment and buying lays. Um, so, and that was about 1981-82, and uh, I took a course with uh, Mark Lindquist uh, in 81, took a course with David Ellsworth in 82, and um, really started to fall in love with the process, uh, and g got more and more involved, uh, and then in 1984, uh, I had indicated to both of those men that I would be interested in an apprenticeship and in 1984 Mark Link was called me and asked me if I would be interested in coming to moving to New Hampshire to apprentice with him for a year and a half which I did. Uh, we moved to New Hampshire when my youngest child was three months old and uh, my oldest child was four years old um, and it was quite an adventure. Uh, we. Uh, 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 it was an excellent two, it was an excellent year and a half for me uh, in a number of ways. Um, the one thing that it did for me though was that it gave me a real clear indication that you could express yourself on the lathe beyond the traditional um, um, forms that were being, that I had seen produced on the lathe. Mark Lindquist's work is very much about Mark Lindquist. And I think that's the main thing that I took away from that time there was that I, that, that I received a pretty clear indication that if I wanted to do personal work, something that really spoke about me, then I could, I could, uh, I could do that on the lathe. Um, and, so, and so in 1985, when I moved back down here, I started moving in that direction. Uh, I was accepted into a show uh, vision and concept uh, at Aramont with two pieces. Uh, one was a uh, suspended form that was a, a ceremonial vessel form and the other was a baptismal form that was um, um, uh, also about ceremony and ritual. Um, both of those pieces speak to my, my, uh, my uh, past in that I'm the uh, son of an Episcopal minister and was very involved in Christian ritual and ceremony as a, as a, as a young man and as an acolyte. And so they, they were both, I, I realized, both very important to me uh, in terms of referencing my past. I think the man that had the most influence on me in terms of what uh, in terms of the work he was doing, there's no question, was Stephen Hogman. Uh, uh, Stephen's work was the first work that I saw that, that you know, uh, indicated to me that you can make figurative work on the lathe. You create figurative sculptural work on the lathe and uh, uh, very successfully. Uh, he, he cut pieces up, he glued, he glued them back together in very uh, interesting ways. He also, he also dealt with the, the, uh, uti the utilitarian object as, as, as sculpture as well. 
So that led to uh, the development of the vessel reference uh, work that, uh, that, uh, that I started uh, doing uh, early uh, in, uh, you know, in my career. Uh, and uh, so he's, he was the main influence. Uh. The way my work progresses uh, is kind of in, it's very erratic. Uh, and it's, in, it, I think that has to do with, there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, is that it, I'm working in three or four different areas. Um, the uh, non-objective work, the work that doesn't really reference anything that's very abstract. Uh, that that is that work is about the material and about the 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 process and my relationship that, that I have with the material and the process. Uh, how my aesthetic uh, fits into that. Um, uh, uh, those two. It, I think of myself particularly in this series uh, as in, in this type this non-objective work as being an arbiter. Uh, between the material, the process, and my aesthetic, I like to, I like for my aesthetic to win the arbitration. Uh, I like for it to be the most, in, you know, important part of the arbitration. However, you know, particularly in these pieces, I want the material to play a part. I want the process to play a part. The process being uh, part. In, in part, uh, my technical vocabulary that I've developed on the lathe. Uh, so that the, the process for me is defined by my technical vocabulary, whereas my aesthetic is defined by my conceptual vocabulary. And I, I like for my aesthetic to win that arbitration, but I do like for the material to be, you know, in the process to be involved in that uh, in, in, in that arbitration and to be a, an important part of it. Um, the other uh, area that I work in, the, the, dominant, the predominant area that I work in is a, is a figurative uh, area and that's broken down into torsos and, and heads. Uh, I include some uh, um, uh, reference to um, uh, animals, primarily birds, uh, in, in that figurative work. And um, that has developed um, over the past 10 years or so. Uh, it, uh, all of these three areas develop simultaneously uh, uh, and they, they all feed each other. So the development of one area is dependent on the development of another area. I might, I might develop techniques in one area and apply them the next time I apply them, I, I might apply them to a figurative piece that, you know, a technique that I've developed in, in the non-objective work, I might apply to a, 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 a figurative piece. So it, it all sort of, sort of runs together and, and I think it, work, it, it works uh, uh, in a number of ways to really help identify my work uh, uh, in terms of the style of work uh, that I make. Uh, so the figurative work is uh, the torsos. Uh, the, the the first torso series was was uh, heavily influenced by the Cycladic figurine.
So I've, you know, I've, I've just never been able to, to use the lathe for production, uh, production work. That's been a real disadvantage. But what I did do was when I was learning to turn, I made, we made our living, I made my living making kitchen utensils, um, cutting boards, that sort of thing, accessories, kitchen accessories. And I played on the lathe. And I took time to develop concepts on the lathe as opposed to developing technical skills. I developed conceptual skills. You know, uh, I think there's a real argument to be made for which one is more important. You know, I mean, there's an argument either way to be made for which one is more important. I w would like for my conceptual skills, my technical skills, to be to be uh, greater than they are. But you know, I wouldn't trade them for the conceptual skills, you know, at all. Uh, and, uh, so I, you know, I get by as 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 a wood turner, as a technician, uh, uh, and you know, but it's not how you get there. I don't think that's important. It's what the piece looks like.